Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Fully Supported and this episode is called How to Make Your Prints Stop Sucking. And no, I don't mean like they suck as in they're not cool. I mean sucking as in like suction. Yeah, I know. Gotcha. Anyway, the point of this is is that a lot of people coming from the world of FDM printing would probably proportion the parts something like this. And yes, this is the Mandalorian Boba Fett Vibro Blade. Very cool prop piece that I'm currently working on. And I thought I would share it with you all. And I was actually thinking about orienting it like this myself. And then I realized that quite a few of the components have hollow cores. Which would literally make it a giant suction cup fest the entire way. Leading to some very warpy parts and some very nasty results. The way to adjust and fix this is kind of simple. But let me show you how bad it is. Look at that. That entire part is a cup. And it's just going to, every pole it's going to be popping off. Which is going to really put a lot of stress on the printer. It's going to put a lot of stress on the FEP. It's going to put more stress than you need to have on the VAT and the FEP. It's not necessary. And all of the parts with those hollow bits in the middle are going to have a similar problem. Now, I know a lot of you are probably going, well, if you hollow the parts anyway, aren't you going to have a similar issue? Well, yeah, but I can put drain holes in most things, whereas this, I would have to start adding additional holes on the sides and things like that where I don't necessarily want to do that. And so for me, the best way to do this is really to um, orient them in a good way. And so the first thing you'll, you know, really have to do is just get your orientation right. So big, tall parts like this, we want to try and angle them a little bit to improve the layer lines because they're all straight lines and stuff like that. So I want to make sure these come out nice. These are for a customer, and I want to make sure that when he gets the parts, they're not going to have to require so much sanding as though his hands and arms will fall off. But I do want to make sure that we retain the good quality and detail that these parts should have for a cosplay prop. Now, we're not going to be doing any of the finishing or anything like that on any of these parts, but uh, we are going to be doing all the print work, which includes all the parts you see here, and then there's the handle bit itself um, and the pummel. So, like I said, there's a way to fix this. You can reorient the part. Most of the time, since these are rectangles, um, I would just lean them back to one corner. So, angle them a little bit this way, a little bit that way, and lean them in the corner. Uh, the reason I go that route is because I um, try to minimize the starting zone to the smallest amount of material I can in that little spot. So I start with the corner, I build up from the corner. Now these are fairly large parts, um, and I probably will use a few heavier supports at the very, very, very bottom. Um, but for the most part, I'm probably gonna use mediums anywhere I need to. Um, otherwise, and maybe a few lights even here and there on some of the finer detail on the, um, the blade part. So when you're looking at something like this, which is a pretty big item and you're looking at cosplay props and stuff, a lot of people are like, oh, you need a giant printer to do it. Not necessarily. Um, I actually cut these parts in half. They were a little too tall for my printer and I decided I'm going to cut them in, in chunks. Um, it's better to do that anyway. The, the, the length of the pieces that were being printed before were just so long. I mean, a 220 millimeter uh, length part, in my opinion, is really long. I don't like parts that long. I prefer, if I can, to cut down on the height as much as possible. I hate when it has to go for an elongated period of time. It just makes the print take longer. So... As you see there with the first part, we angled it up, angled it towards one of the corners, and I angled it towards the blank side. Uh, I'm going to do the same part here, and then we'll do the same part for the blade part. 
And then we'll do the same part for the second part of the blade part. Where essentially each one of these are going to be kind of angled up to a corner. And I still have enough room to do the entire segments of blades. And I probably still have enough room to put the other parts on here. Aside from the handle, uh, handle and pummel. Um, that I'll probably do on a separate printer. Just because I don't I don't like waiting, so I'll just run them on something else <laughs> while I'm waiting for this to finish. Uh, now, I will probably do some minor finishing on this because I want to make sure that the pieces fit well. I want to make sure that the front and the, you know, the top and the bottom of the blade will connect well. And so I, I probably will do a little bit of minor finishing, some adjustment. I may even do as much as connect to the top and the bottom parts. Um, so that being the case, I'm going to get to find out if, um, if we did some good work on this or not. Now probably what's going to wind up happening is I'm going to wind up gluing those segments together. Then we're going to do a resin bead around the segments that we glue together. And then we'll just sand that smooth so you have a nice surface area where that's been attached. And then the parts look like they're one part. Now, of course, I wouldn't go swinging this thing at anybody because I think that's going to be your weak point right there. But uh, I think it should be um, stable enough for cosplay use, which is... Putting it in out of your holster and showing it off. That's about it. Um, so again, if you know, if you're concerned about uh, what is it, breakage over time, the material is pretty durable. Like I said, where you'd have your weak point is where the two parts are joined together. But we use resin to join them together, so you really shouldn't have too much of a problem. Uh, and like I said, I'm probably going to do that for these parts anyway. I'd like to make sure that the test fitting is good and that it fits in the holster and stuff like that. So um, anyway, what I'm also going to do for these parts is I'm going to hollow the blade itself to make it a little lighter. I'm going to hollow both parts of the blade, top and the bottom. And then I'm going to show you guys, you know, you will get suction cups with just about anything. Because people are probably going to be like, oh, you'll get suction cups no matter how you print this stuff. Yeah, you will. But I'm going to show you how to deal with those too, um, using a process called blocking. And I'm not going to show you the whole thing because that's not the point of this video. Uh, but I will show you a pro part of the process of blocking and how I do blocking and how that works in order to uh, make your uh, prints a little bit less suctiony and prevent things like resin traps. So what you're going to want to do is you want to hollow it however you, you know, however, whatever, you know, thickness and quality you want to do. Then you're going to take your hole tool, you're going to punch your holes where you want to punch them. Now, in this particular instance, I'm putting them in places where I think they're going to be well hidden, and they're going to be areas where the client's not really going to care too much that I punched a hole in something. Um, there are parts of the print that are already open, like there are holes, but they're not necessarily placed in such a way that make them, you know, useful for draining. They don't go all the way through. Um, they're in weird spots. They have these, um, they have like a mesh on the inside, like they've been filled. So they're not useful. So I need to create drain holes that will be useful and that we will be able to use. And that's what I'm going to do here in the blade parts. And then we'll do a little testing and see if that fixes the suctioning. And then we'll fix any additional parts that we need to fix um, that didn't get fixed for because of, you know, due to suctioning. You want to always try to place your holes for any kind of drainage closest to where the suction is going to start. And see, those just, that, that doesn't work. Even though that area could be a useful drain spot. Um, even if I pull the hole up, there's just too much. It, it collides with the material. It's just weird. It's where those um, holes are on the bottom, which line up with the other piece. And again, 
Um, I believe those holes are placed in cosplay props like blades uh, because they intend for you to put like a metal rod or something in there to strengthen it, which actually is a really good idea. Uh, and since I'm not going to be the one fully, in, fully assembling it, I'm not going to go ahead and do that. But um, I would recommend it for sure. Definitely want to have something in there. It'll also give it some weight as well, which will make it feel a little bit more realistic in your hand. Now, as you'll see, um, with the hollowing and stuff like that, you can punch the holes out with lychee um, once you've got everything blocked out the way you want it. But what you really want to do first, like I said, once you kind of go through and you go, okay, I've got my, I've still got suction cupping, because like, you know, like I said before, you're going to still find that you're suction cupping. Um, you're going to want to go over to the blockers and you're going to want to do some blocking. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all that detail completely, but I will show you a little bit of it in just a sec. And um, first, I'm going to try and fix some of these suction cups that these pieces currently have um, because they definitely, some of these are easy enough to fix. Like this chamber here, I'm going to put some holes right at the bottom of the chamber. And ho hopefully that will fix it. Now, that, that doesn't quite work. It's a little bit too far. So I'll put one hole there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell, I'll probably eventually put in their smaller hole a little bit further down just for aeration. But you always want to make sure that the holes aren't going to overlap with the wall. You want to make sure that they're not going to, because otherwise they'll cut through the wall. You wind up with uh, geometry problems that way. It'll cut through. You wind up maybe you wind up making the wall too thin and then it can't print right. So you do have to be careful about that. That is a that is an issue that can happen. So again, you want to place your drain holes. Want to make sure that everything is lined up where you want it to be. You want to keep the drain holes in a logical space. You know, like like I said, you want to start them as close to where the opening of the cavity is going to happen, or close to where the beginning of that where your suction is going to start. Um, this will help you prevent the most amount of suction. Like that one hole right there. Decent enough size, like 2.8 millimeters. Eh, could 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 want it to be a bit bigger, but it's a very small 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 space. Excuse me. But if we go ahead and do a recheck, just based on that. Now I've got. I know we got those those traps in there, which we'll fix. But if we do a recheck just based on that, you will see that it does actually make a huge difference. Adding a couple logically placed drain holes. And there we go. Um, there's pretty much down, taking down to, I say, the, the most minimum we can do it with drain holes. Now, that takes care of a large percentage of the blocking. Um, like I said, you know, you had the resin traps in there. We fixed that. We had that weird area over here. Now, we can still fix this because that's not quite 100% fixed. So, I'll show you what I mean. We can go in here. We can stretch out the blocker we have. And we can reposition that in such a way that it is going to actually block more of the area that it needs to. And boom. Now we don't have any suction in that little area. The only suction we're probably going to wind up having is still that one area where the weird lump is in the middle. And you'll see that that's right on the other side here. So um, that should be fine. I mean, I, I think that's a negligible amount of suction and it should, should not make too much of a difference. Now, if we go back over to the other one, it's got these two little tiny bits, little tiny suction bits here, and a little tiny bit in the corner. So I think we talked about how it's probably going to come back here and address this. So I'm going to add two little, maybe a bit bigger, add some little, uh, little holes back here, maybe one, and then we'll do another suction cup search, and you'll see that we'll remove it. And it doesn't cut through the material on the bottom side so you won't have an issue and then we have one little trap that we didn't catch quite here on the blade on the inside and for that we'll need to do an, um, a blocker adjustment just adjusting and adding a piece where we need to add it now of course once you get everything perfect and the way you want it like I said before go ahead and use your whole cut um, 
I don't think for something like this, you may want to save the holes because it may make it easier for you to plug and patch the holes on your prop. Um, I usually don't. If you want to save the holes, just remember the option is, you know, cap and hole or hole or cap only. You do cap. Well, sorry. Cap only if you don't want the hole, you just want to make the cap. Cap and hole punches the hole and also pulls the cap out as well. Also, make sure you adjust it so that way the cap gap is not 0.5. You want to make it about 0.1 because you don't really want it to be super snug, but you don't want it to be so loose that it's just going to fall in the hole. You want to be able to kind of push it in and it kind of wedges itself in. And that will do it at that size. Um, I'll probably add one more drain hole on the back here, a little bit higher up, just for aeration. Because sometimes they create a vacuum when you only have one good hole. And so I think this will help a bit. And um, there is a little tiny other resin trap in there, but I'll probably go back and clean that up a little bit later. But again, like I said, when you've got your orientation working and you have good orientation and you have good drain holes and you got good hollowing, stuff like this should print no problem. Um, if you were to try to print this off the plate the way I had it set up initially, I think you'd probably break your printer. Or at least come really close to having some catastrophic failure. And you know what? Hey, if you, if you're, if you do that and it actually works for you, please tell me how well it worked and how well the print came out. Because I have a feeling that you're going to have multiple issues if you try to do something like that. But hey, be my guest. Give it a try. Give it a whirl. See what happens and see what you make of it. Because honestly, I don't have a lot of hope for that kind of printing. It's you just gonna you just literally have a whole build plate of suction cups and nothing good is gonna come of that. I think it's a terrible idea. But as you can see, you can take something like that and you can fix it, you can adjust it, even on a smaller printer. I mean this build plate isn't even a full seven and a half inches, and here I am building an entire prop. Um, and yeah, I'm going to take two printers to make the rest of it, but regardless, it's still, you know, you can still do quite a lot regardless of the size of your printer. Anyway, I hope that this helped you guys figure out how to make your prints not suck. And I really appreciate y'all watching the videos as usual. Any hit that subscribe. Don't forget to leave comments and ring the bell for notifications. See you all soon.